How can you kill what's already dead? Welcome back, Nerd Squad. It's me, Amanda. Who are your favorite monstrous villains? Ooh. Number 10, Earth Z Thanos. Earth Z Thanos is a version of the villainous character that was infected by the zombie virus that turned everyone else on Earth to 149 into zombies. Thanos included, of course. Thanos initially is a formidable foe, despite not yet acquiring the Infinity Gauntlet in this reality and piecing it together. Still, Thanos was already in this universe attempting to invade Earth before becoming a zombie. He ends up meeting with the zombie Galacti, who possess the powers of Galactus, shared among them, having the power cosmic. When this version of Thanos accuses the Hulk of eating more than his counterparts, Hulk squashes Thanos' head, ending his undead life. In removing Thanos from the equation, Hulk then claims he now can reasonably eat for the two of them without issue, since Thanos' share will of course be going untouched. And friends, before we move on to our next spot here, if you love what we do here at the channel, why not show us you love us by hitting that subscribe button. It really does help us out 100%. Number 9, Gotham. Remember Gotham and Gotham Girl? I do. They were the siblings that were saved by Batman when they were young and were as such inspired to also become heroes. They ended up getting superpowers and everything, but then Henry Jr., known as the hero Gotham, ended up losing control and being driven into an unstoppable rage. In the end, he had to be taken out by his sister Claire, but also strangely, this wasn't the end for Gotham. No, 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 no. Instead, multiple people would attempt to revive him over the years, eventually turning him into a zombie who at one point thought he was Bane. That was the thing that happened. We thought he was Bane too, until we learned otherwise. Gotham as a hero and as a villain had insane powers, but they came at a high cost, that being his life force energy. Every time he used his powers, it basically brought him closer to death. Until, of course, he was undead. During that time, his powers were basically limitless because, you know, he didn't have to worry about getting closer to death. He's already dead. However, once Henry had his mind fully restored and was given the option of fully being returned to life, fully resurrected, he decided to opt for death instead. He would eventually die permanently, at least, you know, for now, until somebody revives him. Refusing a resurrection level dose, the amount of the Lazarus resin he had taken, was only able to keep him animated for a few days before he finally passed on. We'll see how final that finally ends up being, of course. Number 8, Marvel Zombies Scarlet Witch. Marvel Zombies Scarlet Witch is probably one of the most terrifying undead villains that I personally can think of. She appeared in the Marvel Zombies What If episode, where it was revealed that Vision was luring survivors into his domain to feed her to keep his love alive, after being unable to cure her. This version of Wanda also still fully possessed her powers. While Wanda isn't always a villain or antagonist in the comics or MCU, she definitely was in this episode. She was powerful enough to take on the Hulk and later still powerful enough for a corrupted Doctor Strange to think she might stand a chance against Ultron, or at least serve as a distraction for as long as she was alive. Sadly, of course, Ultron was powerful enough to defeat Wanda. He solved this problem by completely destroying the world that they were fighting on. Although I have heard she's going to make a return in the Marvel Zombies show, so not dead yet. Potentially. Number 7, Solomon Grundy. Epitomizing what this list is really all about in regards to the term undead is Solomon Grundy. This is a villain who is destined to die and return again and again and again. Solomon Grundy's real name is Cyrus Gold, and he is often characterized as being a mindless zombie. Though I gotta say, I enjoy when he's being depicted as, you know, smarter than you might think. Like his portrayal in the earlier issues of the current Harley Quinn series that started back in 2021. Solomon Grundy is often a villain who hangs around Gotham and as such falls in the category of being a Batman villain most often. While Solomon Grundy might not be the most powerful Batman villain out there, he's pretty much undefeatable, at least when it comes to his overarching defeat, as you know, he can't die. So he's much more resilient than many other adversaries Batman and his family have come up against. Number 6, Franklin Richards. Though really, he wasn't Franklin anymore in this reality. While Franklin Richards is known as a hero in the comics and the son of the Fantastic Four couple, Sue Susan Storm and Reed Richards in the reality of Earth 616. In the Cancerverse, he became known instead as the host of the many angled ones, although originally he was also all those other things. These were the beings that were able to coerce the hero Marvel into a way to cure his cancer by killing death, allowing life to reign wild and free. However, that turned out to not be as good as it sounded, and the many angled ones were able to come across into the universe, invading and taking Franklin Richards as a host for multiple of their eldritch entities. Entities. Hence why here we could see him as a villain. Although, you know, it's not really him anymore. He's kind of just a bunch of eldritch entities 
together. Number 5. Black Hand Black Hand is known for being the avatar of Necron, basically becoming an agent of death as a Black Lantern and Necron's right hand man. Literally too, since I believe it is Black Hand's right hand that is black, which in a version of the story is gifted to him by Necron and basically gives him like death touch powers. Black Hand was dying to join the Black Lanterns, but literally he was. He died to join them. In fact, in order to become a Black Lantern, you had to have died at some point and it was in this way, after taking his own life, the Black Hand was able to join up. As he is already dead but reanimated, that makes him an undead villain. And considering he was part of the charge, with the other Black Lanterns being the main person to lead that charge, you know, aside from Necron, I think we can consider him to be in general fairly unstoppable. I mean, he did get stopped, but it took a lot to stop him, so you know. Number 4. Gore the God Butcher Gore is an interesting one. While in Love and Thunder he was defeated and lay dying by the end of this film, and in the comic he is defeated and killed kinda as well, when we look forward into what's considered to be, well, I think now an alternate future, it's revealed that he actually can't really be killed. At least not in the way you think. This is because of the bond that Gore made with the symbiote known as the All Black, both a necro sword and the very first symbiote to ever have existed, created by the god of symbiotes himself, the former king in black, Null. Years into the future, it is revealed that Gore managed to survive thanks to the All Black, and he does end up returning. In the end, King Thor is required to basically strip Gore of the symbiote in order to defeat him. This is also no easy feat, as the level at which Gore and the All Black are entwined is pretty deep at that point. Similar to how connected Cletus Cassidy and Carnage are, like we're talking on like molecular levels. Number 3. Deceased Darkseid Darkseid is one of the most fearsome villains over at DC Comics, so oh boy, wait till you see what he's like when he becomes undead. Just like in the main continuity, Darkseid in the Deceased universe also remains obsessed with the anti-life equation. He is also still a new god and the ruler of Apocalypse. At one point he attacks Earth, seemingly attempting to conquer it, but in reality he had an ulterior motive. His goal was actually to take Cyborg and implant him with a version of the equation that would use his body to spread the virus digitally to the rest of the world. Even though this part of his plan succeeded, his attempt to spread the virus backfired somewhat with Darkseid himself becoming infected. Ooh. Driven mad once he became a member of the anti-living, Darkseid dove deep into the inferno at the center of Apocalypse, causing it to explode. This was believed to have killed him, but it was later revealed that he'd been alive the whole time, trapped inside the frozen planet. Once the frozen ball that was once Apocalypse was smashed, or cracked really, that allowed Darkseid to break free, and allowed him to continue his reign of terror. Number 2. Marvel Zombies Thanos Marvel Zombies Thanos comes from the Marvel Cinematic Multiverse. He is hinted as being a major antagonist for our survivors in the animated spin-off series Marvel Zombies. He is hinted at being a major antagonist for our survivors in the animated Marvel Zombies universe, which we briefly only saw a glimpse into during What If. Marvel Zombies is said to be a spin-off show which will continue this story. In this reality, Thanos has already acquired almost all of the Infinity Stones, almost fully forming the Infinity Gauntlet. He currently happens to be in the Golden City in Wakanda, which is kind of where our surviving heroes are reportedly heading, at least as far as we know right now. I imagine this version of Thanos will be even more fearsome than his comic book zombie counterpart. Number 1. Necron Necron is probably one of the most famous undead villains in the DC Universe. This is because of his tie to the Blackest Night event, an event that not only threatened all life on Earth, but all life in the cosmos as well. It was revealed by the end of the event that Necron's goal was to rule over the universe by destroying the White Lantern entity. Doing so, it turns out, would allow Necron to destroy all life in the universe. Now, fortunately, Necron's plan is foiled and his ties to the physical world end up being severed, but the challenging thing about Necron is that you can never really kill him permanently since he isn't alive to begin with. Necron himself, when seemingly killed or defeated, will simply return to the land of the unliving. There he can bide his time and plan until he is ready to return again, which is likely what he's doing right now. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, you stay nerdy, YouTube. Bye!